or co-founded a company called Move 37 in 2016, focused on managers using machine learning and alternative data. Um, and they were using NLP to do that. I mean, how is that different or is it materially different than that? In other words, you know, you could use NLP and you say, oh, um, you know, if there's a liability mentioned or um, red flag or reserve or, you know, you put in these sort of triggers, keywords, which people like myself had previously done as fundamental discretionary analysts. How, how is that different than just using NLP X years ago versus today using LLMs? Um, sure. So, I, I mean, if we take the example of a rules-based approach where we're flagging particular words, um, maybe we're even, in, in many cases, uh, natural language processing will map language w words uh, to different sentiment and then attach sentiment to those, to those uh, words and topics that are mentioned along with those words. But if you think about the fail rate of that approach compared to what you might get from a a human analyst actually reading the document, understanding it, understanding the changes, understanding the changes in context of other things that are going on. I think everybody would agree that the human is going to do a better job assessing the, the meaningfulness of that update or change or mention. If we think about uh, the rules-based sort of word, word list uh, mapping approach on one side of the spectrum and the human on the other side, the AI models are starting to move towards the middle. Thanks. Um, anyone want to add anything? Or? Yeah. yeah, go on, Satish. I just want to add one, one thing here. When you compare with the existing NLP models with Gen AI kind of thing, uh, I see a key differentiator. Earlier, you, you knew what was the use case and you are really targeting with the limited scope, right? And you are really trying to curate, and of course, there's a lot of false positives. With generative AI, the possibility is, what could be that word even before the human in the loop really can predict that? So in a way, you are trying to identify using the sensitivity analysis. You risk rank those sensitivities. Now, none of the analysts would have thought that that could be a trend because it was never accessible. That is the possibility with generative AI. Of course, there would be a lot of false alarms out there, but that needs to be fine-tuned, and that's the difference I see. Uh, maybe just to ask, I think for investment management purposes, you know, generative AI is mostly used right now to augment or improve the efficiency of human analysts, human portfolio advisors, and so forth. Right? They're not really being used to replace them. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. So with, and, and this is actually a public reference. You can look up the video if you would like. So Bridgewater went public with AWS and Anthropic uh, about a use case where their analysts or portfolio managers can use a system whereby they enter natural language queries into that system to analyze data. So they can say something like, graph me the performance of this stock or this strategy or graph me the sharp ratios, what have, what have you. And, and it'll the system will write code. Well, first, it'll clarify whether it understood the, the, the question correctly, and then it'll write code to gener de generate the visualizations that'll be uh, that, that'll answer those questions, right? And Bridgewater has come out and said they're not looking really to replace, you know, the senior analysts or the portfolio managers, but they think they have a solution now that actually is a really good sort of potential replacement or competition for a first-year analyst, and they're going to try to push that to, you know, a second-year analyst, right? So. So that's how they see it, right? Not necessarily as a replacement for sort of a quant strategy, even though I think what Dan is saying is that you can do that too. But where a lot of the, the efficiencies and use cases are coming from is just providing that sort of support system uh, in the form of something that can do what a first year analyst uh, can do, but much more efficiently and cheaper and so forth. Right, because based on what, uh, for example, Bridgewater is a good example, having been a former investor there. Um, and based on what's you know, public information from them, their, their models are all human generated and based on humans like Bridgewater is not historically nor likely, I think, in the near future to use neural nets or deep learning or, you know, have the computer create models they don't understand. Their whole premise is based on understanding the global economy, economics, financial systems, money supply and making that into a model. So what you say makes sense as to the way they would, for example, apply it. Um, yeah, go on, Daniel. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. So by no means am I saying that um, these models are generating trading strategies. Um, what I am saying is at some point you need to extract from unstructured data a label or a normalized 
tag. Um, and so that's uh, an application where these models do extremely well. So if you wanted to know, um, you know, for example, uh, whether a company is talking about reducing their inventory due to supply chain, uh, um, you know, uh, supply chain tensions easing, uh, that's very hard to extract in a rules-based way um, by mapping particular words, something contextual like that. Whereas with uh, a large language model, extremely straightforward.